The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. On behalf of RBCS, RBCS Australia, RBCS New Zealand, and Software Testworks, we welcome everyone today to this webinar on advanced software testing with pairwise techniques. I'm Rex Black, president of RBCS, a worldwide testing and quality assurance firm serving clients ranging from small startups to Fortune 20 global enterprises. Since 1994, RBCS has been both a pioneer and leader in quality hardware and software testing. RBCS has offices in the United States, Australia, New Zealand, and Sri Lanka, with partners around the world. RBCS delivers insight and confidence to our clients, helping them get quality software and hardware products to market on time and with measurable return on investment. RBCS has a team of international consultants that deliver customized training, consulting, and outsourcing services for companies that are looking to improve their test and quality assurance practices. RBCS has helped hundreds of companies reduce development and support costs while assuring the best quality products are delivered to their customers. I am the author of Pragmatic Software Testing, Advanced Software Testing Volumes 1, 2, and very soon 3, Foundations of Software Testing, Critical Testing Processes, and Managing the Testing Process. I hold a degree in Computer Science and Engineering from UCLA. I am also past president of the International Software Testing Qualifications Board, and the American Software Testing Qualifications Board. Before we start the presentation, a couple of housekeeping notes. If you have any questions during the course of the webinar, please feel free to submit them throughout the presentation at any time via your webinar interface. There's no need to ask for presentation copies. Presentation is available on the web at www-us.rbcs-us.com. There's also no need to ask uh, how to register to win the free e-learning course. Simply by attending the webinar today, you have automatically registered to win. The lucky winner will be notified within 48 hours of the webinar, so check your email over the next couple days, and if you have a spam filter that things tend to get caught in, make sure you check that. We uh, have a rule that if somebody doesn't respond within a certain period of time, 24 hours of being notified of being a winner, then we will select another winner. If you are having problems with the audio or visual components of this webinar, please contact GoToWebinar Support. If for whatever reason you cannot get to the webinar online or if you're dealing with an unreliable connection, please download the slides from the basic library at www.rbcs-us.com and be sure to use the telephone to connect rather than voice over IP. <clears throat> So with the preliminaries out of the way, I hope you enjoy this free webinar from RBCS. We do these free webinars as a service to the software testing community because at RBCS we're a not just for profit company. Today's presentation is a continuing multi-part series on advanced software testing. We've done a few of these so far and we've got a few more to come. I haven't decided how many we'll do. I'll, 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 uh, I'll know we're done when I feel that way or when you tell me I'm done. The material comes from one of two books, either Advanced Software Testing Volume 1 or Pragmatic Software Testing. And today we are uh, going to look at uh, pairwise techniques of various sorts. Now, I chose to do this series of webinars on advanced software testing because there are many powerful test design techniques that have been developed over the last 30 so years, 30 or 40 years, but a lot of these techniques aren't in use. Um, why? Well, <clears throat> people aren't aware of the technique, or they're aware of it, but they don't know how to use it. Uh, they can't identify situations where they can use it, uh, or they try to apply it and misapply it and give up trying to apply it. So this series of webinars is designed to help address those issues. <clears throat> so... Now, by, just to distinguish what we're talking about here from, you, know, you might be called unadvanced software testing, 
Uh, the basic techniques are things like equivalence partitioning and boundary value analysis and, you know, to some extent, like the basic forms of exploratory testing and so forth. These are all, you know, straightforward and uh, you know, very useful for testing things like input field validation and um, proper alignment of reports and fonts and so forth. But, you know, if you really want to get into the internals of the system and what should or shouldn't happen, then you need to go beyond that. So we looked at a number of techniques, use cases, decision tables, uh, state transition table, uh, tables and, and um, diagrams. And those were useful for testing various kinds of business logic. Now in this particular example here, pairwise techniques, this webinar, we're going to look at what happens when independent options might interact. So when I talk about independent options, I'm talking about we've got some set of factors, and each factor has various options that it could take on, like, for example, configuration options in an uh, application or uh, various connection options that might be available. And um, those options can supposedly be set completely independent of each other, and either they don't interact or they interact in a very uh, clearly defined uh, way. Uh, so what we're looking for here is a way to test uh, option interaction or test for option interaction without spending an inordinate amount of time testing every single possible combination. So, you know, if you think we've got, say we've got uh, uh, 10 options available for five different factors. Uh, it doesn't seem like a whole lot. You know, you've got a, a screen. It's got five pull-down menus, and every pull-down menu has ten different things you can select off of it. Like, well, how hard could it be to test that? Well, if you wanted to test every single possible combination, then you'd be looking at ten uh, to the fifth power, which is 100,000. And that's obviously not something that you're going to do. So we need a way to prune down the possible combinatorial explosion that could occur here while at the same time giving ourselves reasonable confidence that uh, we've tested enough, and enough of course in the, concept, in, the, in the context of testing is always a difficult word, but we've tested enough that we can feel that we've adequately mitigated the risk of combinational problems. And so the technique that we're going to look at to do that is uh, referred to as pairwise testing. Now, again, what we're doing in pairwise testing is we're looking at unconstrained combinations of options for factors. So we identify various factors of interest. We identify the options that that factor could take on, the different settings that it could have. And we're going to make sure that we do two things. One is that we test every option at least once, but more importantly than that, every pair of options that could occur across all the different pairs of factors, we're going to test those at least once. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a tabular representation of factors with rows showing combinations of options for each factor. And then we are going to make sure that we test uh, or have present in our tests, you know, covered in our tests, uh, each row of that table. And by doing so, we can...